I want to talk about this. Today, I went to Speedway, which is one of our local gas stations. I bought 12 gallons of gas. My gas came up to 51.71 at 12 gallons of gas. And I have to add that's eight cents off a gallon because at one of our local grocery stores, if you buy a certain amount of groceries, then you get maybe five cents off, 10 cents off, or 15 cents off. And it depends on what the promotion is that month. My daughter bought some food and I had a five cent off, I had a five cent off receipt. And then also because I used my card, I got three cents off. So I had a total of eight cents off a gallon. I still ended up spending $51.71 for 12 gallons of gas, and that's E85. That is not regular gas. That is ethanol. That is gas made out of corn. So I bought my gas, filled up my tank, and my tank was not completely empty. It was about a quarter, quarter full. I meant to fill it up yesterday, but I did not get to the gas station yesterday. Fortunately for me, the gas remained the same as what it was yesterday. So I filled up my gas, 51.71. I normally can fill my tank up um, 19, or excuse me, 20, 2019. In 2019, and this is before the pandemic, just to give you a little bit of relatability, E85 was usually around $1.99. It was always running $1.99, $2, maybe $2.10 at the most. So now it has doubled. It, I paid $4.30 a gallon this morning for my gas. That's a little more than doubling the price of gas since 2019. Uh, yeah, 2019, I was paying $1.99. And 20, early 2020, when, you know, everything was shut down, I was paying maybe $1.75 was the cheapest. And that's because everything was shut down. But prior to that, I was only paying $1.99 a gallon. So this brings me to my next point. When I was a child, I was eight years old, maybe nine. I don't know if you are old enough to remember or even if they had them at, um, after this time, but the weekly readers. We used to have weekly readers every week. We would get them in third and fourth grade and it would tell like up-to-date news and have fun facts about animals and what's in the news. And I remember this, I think I was in the fourth grade that this particular time I read an article, we as a class read this article that um, in the future, and this was 50 years ago, mind you, I'm 57, so this is about 50 years ago, that in the future, things were going to change. Climate was going to change. This was 50 years ago. All right, they said at that time that all the northern states, and I am from Michigan, that all the northern states would get, would get warmer, while all the southern states would get warmer. So we have seen this come in to fruition um, through the last couple of years. Texas had that big ice snowstorm a couple of years ago in 2020, I think the same year that we had the beginning of um, COVID. So yeah, we have known about global warming for a long time. And let's be honest here, I did a little bit of research. We have actually known about global warming for 200 years. Can you believe it? There have been people, scientists, physicists, this one physicist in particular, I can't remember his name, but it was in, I think it was in 1838. So it was, or er, is 18, 1838, 1824, 1824. It was in 1824, a physicist, um, discussed the greenhouse effects and um, the connection, wait, no, that was spent, that was in 1938 that a scientist from Sweden, his name was Spent, and I can't remember his last name, but he is the one that made the connection between carbon dioxide and global warming. So we've known about it for a long, long time. 
And since then, we've had a few policies put into place, not a lot, mind you, but we have had a few policies put into place. We've had people talk about it. Do you remember when Al Gore talked about it several years ago? I don't think there was a lot done. There was not a lot of policies put into place at that time, but we have known about global warming for over 200 years. And what behooves me is the fact that no one has really made a plan. And then all of a sudden, along comes our new leadership and our new leadership wants us to just throw away our gas cars and go completely electric. We've got Governor Newsom in California who is banning like all gas made cars by I think 2030 or 2035, something like that. Do your research, I don't know, please don't quote me. But the new leadership is go green, go green, go green all the way but there's no plan. There's no plan, I have not seen any plan. Now my daughter is pregnant. She is pregnant with her first child, she's 22. She's making plans. She's planning, you know, she's gotta buy the crib, gotta get the diapers, I've gotta do this and I've gotta do that. And this is how much I'm gonna save out of this check and this is how much I'm gonna save out of each check so I can make sure to buy these things that my baby needs. She has a plan. She is not waiting until the baby is born for that plan to come into fruition. She is making the plan, she's planning it now. That way when the baby gets here, she will have everything she needs. The leadership that we have, and this can go either way, it can go to either party. You have to have a plan in order to move ahead and move ahead successfully. And there's no plan in place. And now we have food shortages. We have shortages, we have all kinds of shortages. I went to the store this morning and I went to our local grocery store and um, I went, wanted to buy some spinach because I don't have any spinach in my garden now. I gave what spinach I had, I gave it to my son so I don't have any spinach. So I wanted to buy some spinach, a little one one, let me see, 12 ounces, $5.99 for a five, 12 ounce tub of spinach. And this, yes, is organic spinach. It's not like they, it's not like, like spinach that um, you can buy just in a bag. It's organic spinach, but nonetheless, um, $5.99 for one 12 ounce container of spinach. When I can go to Walmart and buy the same spinach for $2.98. There's a big difference. So I live 26 miles, 25 miles, 28 miles, 26 or 28 miles give either directions. If I go north, if I go north, it's 26 miles. If I go south, it's about 28 miles to a Walmart. And my thinking is, and this has always been this way because my local grocery store the prices are absolutely ridiculous. On one or two items, I can save the money to drive to where I need to go. And even still, this morning I was thinking that, oh, well, because gas is so high, I'm going to get my spinach in here in town rather than driving to Walmart to get it. Nope, $5.99 for a tub of spinach, and it's $2.98 at Walmart. The same spinach, the same organic tub of spinach twice as much in my local food store. So for me, it pays me to drive to Walmart to get my spinach. And I know a lot of people don't like Walmart, boohoo, whatever, I don't care. Um, I have a budget to think about, I have a family to think about, and I'm still paying on my student loans. And that is the biggest obstacle in my life right now is getting those student loans paid off. So, The fact of the matter is, we have known about global warming for over 200 years, and not one plan has been put into place by any of our leadership. Uh, we can do what we can do at home to do our part to help with the greenhouse gas effects, et cetera, et cetera, but for policies to be put into place, that has to be done by the local government. 
the first car, the first car ever made was actually run by steam. Can you believe it? It was run by steam, which I think that's also run by coal. I'm not really sure. I would have to do my research on that as well. But the second car that was made was an electric car, car that ran on electricity. That was the second car that was made. That car was made before gas powered cars were made. And here now we are with everything so bad that um, there's food shortages, there's baby formula shortages. Come on, baby formula shortages? There's not shortages. This is man-made and it's deliberate. When we send food, baby food, to other countries and you see shelves and shelves of stock supplies of baby formula, and here in America, we have shelf after shelf after shelf empty of baby food formula. And that's not the only thing. When I went to my local grocery store this morning, there were no berries. There were no berries at all. There were no blueberries, there were no strawberries, there were no blackberries, there were no raspberries. Nada, none. But I went to Walmart and I was able to get some. Also, I went to Meyer. I don't know if you're familiar with Meyer. I know it's like in the Midwest states, Ohio, Indiana, Michigan, I think Indiana, maybe a couple in Tennessee or I don't even know, maybe one or two in Pennsylvania, I'm not for sure, but I went to Meyer the other day and they had berries. Um, but it is definitely getting bad. We have food shortages and if you don't believe me about hyperinflation, just look at my proof. $5.99 for one 12 ounce container of spinach compared to $2.90, it was $2.98 at Walmart. And I know why it's cheaper at Walmart, but the fact that our local grocery store is price gouging is extremely sad. Um, My biggest, what I want you to take away from this is planning and prepping and getting your pantry in order. You have to prepare. You cannot just fly by the seat of your pants and think everything's going to be okay because I'm telling you it's not. I'm telling you it's not going to be okay. Even if our leadership was to be impeach that doesn't necessarily mean that he is going to be thrown out of office okay um, we have at least another two and a half to three years of this before things could possibly change so we need to get ourselves out there and we need to prepare and we need to get a plan and we need to work the plan I'm sure you have all heard I'm sure you have all heard it failure to plan is a plan to fail. And those are the words that I want to leave you with. Get out there, plan, prep, get your pantry ready, do what you need to do to feed your family. And on that note, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video. I hope you take my words to heart and I will see you in my next video. Bye.